subject. Ladies and gentlemen of excellent family, introduced under the most respectable conditions, in an atmosphere of elegance and refinement. Object, matrimony. Unfortunately, I won't be able to offer my usual lighting service today, as I have a previous appointment in Yonkers, New York. Framed in the second marriage of Mr. Hart, then the elder, the well-known half-millionaire. As my late husband echoed me, I said, that means he's got at least 60,000 cash. But I'll do my best to have you carry the drop somebody's threshold before the week is out. Now, I might also mention I'm available for financial consultation, instructions in the guitar and mandolin, short distance calling, and therapist vein reviews. <laughs>
this money and send it out circulating among the people like rainwater the way you taught me. And I want to find from you. Sometimes the day that you approve. Oh, it won't be a marriage in the sense that we had one, but I shall certainly make him happy. And I'm tired of him. Tired of living from him for now. So I want that sign.
You know what people say, although I would never believe the rumors. No, I didn't. Rumors? What rumors? Nothing to get upset about, Mr. Van I mean, according to all known facts, her first husband passed on quite naturally. <laughs> Just as he gets it started. But do you suppose the chat is she makes special for me? <laughs> but it can happen to anyone. No, there's no truth in it. Just one word of advice, Mr. Van Gelder. Eat out. Now, hold on, Mrs. Levi. Do you mean to say that Mrs. I Moore... mean to say nothing, Mr. Van Gelder. Just friendly advice. Keep away from the chowder. By the way, she's ordered her wedding gown. Beautiful. You should see it. Black. Well, as I said before, Mr. Van Gelder, congratulations on your forthcoming nuptials. And may you rest. <laughs> I mean, may God and angels watch over you both, particularly at dinner. Look here, Mrs. Levi, you introduced me to Mrs. Malloy, and rumors are not, I intend calling on her this very afternoon, as arranged. Very well, Mr. Van Gelder. Then there's nothing more for me to do but go back to New York and tell the other girl, the heiress, not to wait. Heiress? What did you say? Nothing, a word. Particulars, Mrs. Levi, I demand particulars. Her name. Her name? Um, money. Ernestina Money. What a lovely, lovely name. Picture, if you will. Hair as shiny as a newly minted dime. Eyes as big round as silver dollars. Skin as soft and mossy as an old greenback. Why can't you be at my nap? Age. 19, weight 102, waist 47. Waist 47? That's with the money belt. Now, I can arrange to meet this Ernestina this very afternoon. I ain't got time, Mrs. Levi. I gotta bring my niece Ermagod to New York until she forgets a certain Ambrose Kemper. Oh, I can do that for you, Mr. Van Gelder. I know just how to handle such things. But then I'm watching the 14th Street Parade. What an amazing coincidence! Guess who's been chosen to ride on the main float? The spirit of 14th Street. Miss Money. Her mother was a cash, you know. All right, Mrs. Levi, I'll meet Miss Money at the end of the parade, but I still intend calling up Mrs. Malloy first. Oh, dear, what race will you make me run? Very well, Mr. Van Gelder. I'll meet you on that bench in front of Mrs. Malloy's hat shop at 2.30. As usual. <laughs> One more thing, Mrs. Levi. Suppose I decide against you, Mr. Boy. And I don't like Miss Money, neither. Well, then, I happen to have one more name on my list, Mr. Van Gelder. A name I know as well as my own. But let's not go into that right now. It'll come up by itself all in good time. Don't you worry about that. Oh, but wait till you see Ernestina Horace. A vision. <laughs> A dream. It takes a woman, all patterned and pink, to joyously clean out the train in the sink. And it takes an angel with golden and lashes, and so just a finger to put dump in the ashes. Yes, it takes a woman. Da 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 da
going to have a good meal, and we're going to be in danger. We're going to spend all our money, and we're going to almost be arrested. Oh, the roosters. And one more thing, we're not coming back to Yonkers until we've each kissed a girl. <gasps> Cornelius, you can't do that. You don't know any girls. I'm 33 years old, I've got to begin sometime. I'm only 17, Cornelius, it isn't so urgent for me. New York, Barnaby Elevator trains, a whole life to Broadway. The stuffed whale at Barnum's Museum. A stuffed whale? A stuffed whale? What do you say, Barnaby? Yes, Cornelius, yes. Now, the first thing to do is to help you financially independent. I know how to find your job. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm an artist. Levi, I hate. Well then, my card. Susanna Levi, ain't it quite enough to sing and dance? Now, there's a man, Rudolph Rudd, whoever, at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant on 14th Street. I'll give you a note for him, and we'll see if he can have you both entered in the poker contest tonight. The prize is a week of engagement, and it's filled with cups. All the cups we won, after we meet.
but one is enough for a woman as long as it's true love. And it was that. Minnie, look, there's two men staring at the shop. Men? Why, I do believe they need to come in here. Men in the shop? Oh, Mrs. Malloy, what shall we do? Do? Why, flirt with them, of course. I'll give you the short one. Mrs. Malloy! And you and all that talk about love. Love enough I've had, Minnie. It's a bit of adventure I can do it now. We'll get them all heated up and we'll drop them cold. It'll be good practice for married life. Now, you go to the front room, Minnie. I know some ways we can perk up our appearance. Besides, a bit of a weight will only make them more nervous and easier for us to strike. Sir, right. Sir, right. And so I'll try. 